to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Shall be established in the top of the mountains. Just use your imagination to try to comprehend what this is saying. There is no physical sense in this prophecy that the mountain will be exalted above other mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. And then verse 2 says, please give us verse 2, and many nations, many nations, not a few, shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. I can preach all night here. Notice it says the house of the God of Jacob. To understand this scripture, you have to study Jacob and what made God to call himself the God of Jacob. Because the God of Jacob is the God that gives men encounters. And he says, let us go to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he says, many things will happen when we get there. Number one is that he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. He says, for the law shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is a prophetic picture of the season of dominion of the church now as you know every time the bible talks of mountains it begins to talk of spheres of influence it doesn't necessarily mean literal mountains are we together now uh, for instance um, um the bible says that satan took jesus up to an exceeding high mountain and from that mountain he showed him the glories of the whole world there is no mountain you stand upon that you can see the glory of the world. It was not just a physical location. He took him to the epicenter where the entire wealth and estate is a spiritual location. And from that standpoint, he saw the glory of the whole world. And he says, if you bow to me, I will grant you access to this. For it has been given to me, he boldly said. And Jesus never said you are lying. Are we together now? Because you know that the earth was handed over and the dominion and the authority was given to Satan from Adam. And one of the, the, the redemption agenda, much more than granting us access to the life of God, was a restoration of dominion. Maybe let me just steal out two minutes to really tell us how Satan became the God of this world. It's a technology in the spirit and i pray that as little as it sounds god will guide us grace to understand there is a spiritual system by which you transfer ownership and responsibility it's a subtle system that we continue to use every day and i will tell you what happened man and his wife now default from the laws of god and then the Bible tells us that they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden. You just leave that scripture up. And then he called on Adam. Notice the protocol that God never called on Eve. Are we together now? Because the, the organogram of authority was God and then man, the male, and then the woman, his wife, then creation. Are we together now? And so when he came to the garden, he called man. He said, Adam, please follow me. He said, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. 
and then he says who told you you have opened up your ears to the influence of another voice that has supplied you an information outside of what i gave you notice how adam transferred dominion first to the woman he didn't get to satan first it went to the woman and then to satan and here's how he transferred it the woman you gave me this woman is responsible from that time god did not speak to adam again he went to the woman and said woman now that the man transferred responsibility by complaining and giving excuses he says what is this that you have done and watch how the woman transfers responsibility to satan he says the serpent satan remained the god of this world because he didn't blame anybody he kept quiet had he blamed another entity the power would transfer to him listen carefully hmm. so when jesus came and was standing before pontius pilate they asked him questions and he kept quiet and they said can't you talk it was a mystery who will he blame who is greater than him to blame and transfer responsibility so he kept quiet that silence is also a system of dominion there is a language that only silence can speak listen down i just thought to interject this to grant us grace to understand so when we say satan is the god of this world it is not there is no superstition as to how the dominion came hmm. he became the god of this world held the keys and when jesus came through his silence being led like a sheep to the slaughter his silence was also a system of dominion i hope you know that silence is also a voice and there is a language that silence speaks you must learn to hear the voice of silence so when god is silent he is speaking you have just not been trained to know what he's saying when god is silent he's saying i'm preparing a table before you hmm. praise the lord let's get back to our discussion the bible says that a time will come in the church age when the church will accent and command a level and a dimension of influence and the bible says as a result the nations is not just talking of physical countries is talking of spheres of influence stratas of human activities please listen this is the core of the understanding of kingdom advance because i think for a very long time the body of christ um, we love the Lord, but we have not understood the systems that make for kingdom advance. Are we together? And so as a result, we continue to do well as far as our spiritual growth and maturity is concerned. But we have not sustained the intelligence, nor the strategy to cause God and his value system to be institutionalized within a territory the key to kingdom advance before i define it for you and we continue the key to kingdom advance is twofold we have focused on one and ignored the other there are two keys to kingdom advance the first is called evangelism the second is called influence none of the two will sufficiently replace the other evangelism deals with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men influence talks of establishing the lordship and the value system of christ across every strata of human activities the church will be in trouble if we do not focus on our territory and if we do not institutionalize christ and so dominion is a strategy that was outsourced by the intelligence of god to cause the influence of the church to become palpable are we together now and micah prophesies it that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted and shall be above other mountains and then he says that it shall also be exalted above other hills and from that standpoint the bible says the nations shall flow through it they will say come notice that a time will come we'll stop inviting them our results will continue the invitation 
the bible says that the nations will advise themselves and say come let us go to the mountain of the lord let us go to the god of jacob he will teach us of his ways and he says out of zion will come the law it was isaiah in chapter 60 that he was also buttressing on this prophecy and he said arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you and then he says for darkness this is not an information it's prophecy for darkness shall cover the earth is the same hebrew word used in genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to who abohu confusion disarray for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people and then he says but upon you the glory of the lord shall rise verse 3 is a prophecy someone should receive it says gentiles shall come gentiles shall come gentiles shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising then the bible begins to speak that your gates will be continually open that it will not be short day or night that you will receive the forces of the gentiles he says where thou has been deserted so that no man will pass through you i will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations people of god were in that era where the church will no longer be perceived as a nuisance and an interruption to civilization until now when you mention the word pastor or church it looks like an individual who is a manipulator and an interruption to civilization so you either choose god or you choose wisdom i don't know where that education came from the world view of the church is very pungent and ugly they look at the church as a place where victims and weak people go to find consolation and that is true but the context is not true that the church is is a is a final reservoir of people who are not determined to make it in life they've lost in everything in life and then they go there to be manipulated by a man who continues to console them until death that is not the picture of the bride of christ he says the mountain of the lord's house exalted at the top of all other mountains that it becomes the epicenter of the attraction of the earth that the nations will say let us go let us go let us go kingdom advance therefore i define it i define kingdom advancement as every scriptural strategy that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activity this is what i define as kingdom advance that means whatever we do if it does not culminate in establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and institutionalizing the value system of the kingdom across every strata of human activities we are not advancing the kingdom this is the universal object that must coordinate everything we do from business to politics to um, whatever it is that we have been we are we have been pre-informed that we are there as witnesses we are advocating the cause of the kingdom that is the proper understanding upon which the teaching of dominion falls in place because if dominion is taught as a standalone teaching as important as it is uh, sometimes if not managed well it will only try to stimulate the lust of people who want to be successful but don't want to be serious with god so the goal must be there that it is a system that helps us to establish the lordship of christ if you're with me please say amen, amen. and yesterday i shared with us how that the kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities and that there are dimensions in god and dimensions spiritual allocations that he has kept that when the saints walk into these dimensions then experientially we will have walked in the victory and the dominion that was reserved for us are we together and there are laws and systems 
please you will want to get my teaching yesterday where i taught on different dimensions and levels of accessing the power of god and uh, i'll just talk on two or three areas and systems of dominion number one blessed be the name of the lord number one the first dominion the system of dominion allocated for the victory of the saints is the mystery of prayer hmm. prayer prayer is not just a system to grant access to petitions it is a secret formula that was given to the saints a system by which we manipulate possibilities from the realm of the spirit prayer is predicated upon an understanding that the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm are we still together the bible says in hebrews 11 when you read it's talking about faith it says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god it says so that the things that appear paraphrase it now that they came from the things that did not appear the realm of the spirit is the mother of the physical realm the physical realm is a child that came from a womb of the realm of the spirit that means that everything happens twice it first happens in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests in the physical was it not the book of job that granted us access to see how things happen that a discussion was happening in the heavenlies about a man's destiny and that man was on earth not knowing what would happen and he only became a victim of that catastrophe so in luke chapter 18 the bible says and he spake a parable unto them to the end that men 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 not pastors men ought always to pray and not faint men ought always to pray and not faint as a system we can look through scripture and see the ministry of this deep mystery of prayer and how that the saints through the ministry of prayer commanded levels and dimensions of dominion within their time and dispensation everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer prayer is very powerful prayer is many things among them these prayer is the highest sign of humility prayer is proof of your recognition that you are inadequate without the support and the help of heaven a prayerless christian is an arrogant christian he's not just a backslider prayerlessness is proof of pride it's an indoctrination that you may have subconsciously given yourself that you are sufficient without him and the bible says for without me ye can do nothing are we together prayer is a great sign of humility that when we bow our knees to the father of our lord jesus christ and make petitions and begin to legislate that's the second revelation of prayer prayer is a spiritual system of legislation we enforce mysteries in the realm of the spirit and cause their manifestation through the ministry of prayer james chapter 5 holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god I didn't write this song it was in the place of prayer that i had the angel singing this song exactly as i'm singing it to you prayer is a system of access you penetrate beyond the realms of the three-dimensional realm to access the mind of christ the bible says no man knows the spirit of a man the heart of a man save the spirit that is in that man so it's a system that grants us access to buy into the mind of the spirit and know what is the will of God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. 
now the way the bible teaches us to know god is by personifying individuals that represent the thoughts of god on a subject matter are we together now it is usually in the character of god and we see this even in in the gospels and, and the epistles that when god is discussing a subject matter usually he would buttress on his point if he's not using parables he would find a man that personifies his thoughts so that we can understudy him so when it comes to the portrait of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom he looks for abraham and he says look up to abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him when god is teaching us the systems that can cause a man to thrive he will pick isaac and show us that isaac sowed in that land and received that same year not another year meaning the year you sow is the year you should reap oh don't sit down i'm not i'm not teaching finance here but it's true agriculture is open enough to teach us that it's possible to sow and reap that same year and it says an hundredfold when the bible is teaching us on encounters it will pick a man called jacob in chapter 28 and chapter 32 and show us the dimensions of encounter where jacob would meet with this deity in the night having dispersed his wives his cattle and all of that then a man comes to him and the man says leave me for the day breaketh and he said i will not let you go until you bless me and he showed us how god blesses men by doing something to their names he says what is your name that's where the problem is what identity do you carry in the spirit he says i am jacob he says thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed he touched his tie a symbol of human strength so that that limping position will keep him dependent on god forever that's how god blesses by taking away your human strength and making you ever vulnerable dependent on his power he calls it a blessing not a cause god blesses men by touching their point of human strength the factor in you that makes god unnecessary when he takes it away he blessed you is god blessing us this morning and so the bible is teaching on prayer and then we're about to see a personality that personifies it i'm hurrying up this morning there's so much to talk about but we have to jump so james chapter 5 and verse 13 let's start from 13 then we jump to 16 for time's sake james chapter 5 please and verse 13 the bible says is anyone afflicted at least help us is any among you afflicted the remedy affliction means do you sense an unusual occurrence and a programming in your life and territory because this earth works by seed time and harvest so when you get a harvest for a seed you did not sow it means someone is there sowing it for you because men are not the only farmers while men slept that individuals can come and sow seed so you are reaping a harvest from a seed you did not sow and the bible says are you afflicted not just body I didn't bargain for this infirmity i didn't bargain for my child to fail exams i didn't serve any other god why am i seeing the results of the hidden captured in my family it says if any man afflicted the system of diagnosis is let him pray are we blessed not let him discuss not let him complain not him, let him roll around and say ah dear nigeria he says is any man afflicted do you see any outcome in your life that is not supposed to be based on your dealings with god it's a sign that an individual who has masqueraded as a farmer he has sown a seed let him pray let him pray verse 16 then the bible tells us what prayer can do personified in a prophet called elijah 16 please is that 16 it says confess your faults to one another okay the b part now the effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much next verse please 
haven't told you that when your prayer is effectual it can produce tremendous power dynamic in his workings amplified says then 17 now says elijah was a man of like passion that means he was human in every sense but his secret was that he prayed earnestly shabakatoskia prayer can open heavens prayer can close heavens you need one of the two if your heavens are closed prayer can open it if your heavens are open prayer can keep it open whether your heavens are closed or open it will take prayer to sustain or change the result elijah prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again if you prayed for the child to come you pray for the child to prosper you pray for the child to marry well you pray for your grandchildren to serve god just because you prayed yesterday does not mean it's sufficient no there are vials in heaven where the prayers of the saints are stored and the bible tells us that the prayers can rise up as a memorial and the lifting of our hands like an evening sacrifice he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit so it's not only the heavens he closed he closed the earth too if the heavens are closed the earth is automatically closed the fruit did not come from heaven the fruit came from the earth but because the rain didn't come from the heaven the fruit did not come out so you can close the earth by closing the heavens you can close a man's job by closing the heavens over him you can close a man's business is located on the earth but you close the heavens over him don't close his shop open the shop but close the heavens and the business is still closed hello him madonna hey. hello him madonna Hello, Madonna. Listen down. One time, when they caught Apostle Peter, they beheaded James, and it pleased the people that Herod had beheaded James. And so they caught Peter. Do you know why? Notice, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Do you know? that there were certain things about god only peter james and john knew there was something that happened in the mount of transfiguration with two of them that the rest did not see they were the threefold cord that could not be easily broken and so satan started picking them one by one he wanted to kill three of them immediately he could deal with the rest later on but there was an information captured that must not be released to the church so james was beheaded next online was peter and the church said no way mm -mm. we understand the system of dominion we may not be in government but we are in power and the bible says the church began to pray and when the church prayed peter's angel governed by prayer the angel came and took him out for peter it was as though he was in a vision and then he released him when he went they knocked and they opened and they saw peter and jammed the door they thought it was his angel a fervent and effectual prayer let me tell you something you are really serious in the realm of the spirit when you begin to pray the devil will let you know your prayer is touching him there are many people whose lives are so inert it looks like you are not being attacked you think you have faith it's just because you are not striking any chord in the realm of the spirit you are not a threat whatsoever so the devil just lets you be but there is a night you can stay and pray and you pray in a way and a manner that by the next day someone will call you and say be careful you say ah be careful how many of you have seen the agitations that happen even from your loved ones when you are done praying it's not their fault it's the controlling spirits that are responding to the agitation that the prayer brings so you are done praying 
and immediately everybody wants to annoy you and are being annoyed by you sometimes it can be your husband or your wife just because of a cup of water a heated argument can come the cup is only a scapegoat the realm of the spirit is responding reaction a reaction that is coming from the prayers of the saints men ought always to pray and not to faint the bible tells us that babylon was governed by strange spirits the spirits of the medis and the persians this were this were diabolic operations that used the constellations to manipulate territories and then there was a man who was in government called daniel he was a threat his prayer was a threat and the devil used the influence of the parliament to give a decree that for only 30 days look at what 30 days of prayerlessness allows the devil do 30 days only a decree that for 30 days nobody should pray 30 days of prayerlessness is enough is how we walk in power by prayer i believe and i'm convinced that one of the way you register your presence and your dominion in the realm of the spirit is through the ministry of prayer you don't come out on stage and just tell somebody be healed be blessed oh you are the lion of the tribe of judah the realm of the spirit will say jesus we know paul we know apostle what should me and his wife we know he said who are you there is no incense there is no track record of a ministry of prayer one of the systems of dominion is dominion through prayer dominion to prayer number two please let's hurry up are we blessed this morning the second dominion system allocated for the victory of the saints is called productivity dominion system number two productivity as good as i spoke about prayer many people in the body of christ are prayerful but do not have the requisite level of influence productivity one of the mainstream teachings in the body of christ is for people to be valuable i agree but value does not reward it is productivity that rewards value just makes you is worthy of commendation but not worthy of reward being valuable talks of potentials until that value is converted into products and services that are needed and useful served with excellence that is what commands rewards there is a dimension of the dominion of the saints that will have to come when we obey the command be fruitful it's not a suggestion be fruitful there are spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance and influence and so on and so forth but let me tell you this an unproductive christian is not even a blessing even to god matthew 25 he gives unto three men the bible says five talent two and one and he says according to their several ability the end of that parable justifies that he was fair one who had five talent multiplied it the bible says then the one with two multiplied it and the one with one he came and met him and said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought to just keep your talent here it is and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant productivity 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 john chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit he says so shall ye be my disciples that means you validate my mentorship upon your life when you are productive the saints need to be productive it's one of the reasons why the church is looked at as a nuisance to civilization because there are yet to be men and women who can translate the reality of the wisdom the anointing the power the grace that has been invested from the realm of the spirit to serve the purposes of men within a territory and with all due respect this also goes to us preachers because we have to be careful a lot of preachers are seen as a nuisance 
and manipulators of men because we have not shown ourselves to be productive even beyond the pulpit the pulpit is only a minute aspect of ministry our productivity must justify the honor that is given to us that as a man of God you should sustain an ability to be able to talk and communicate with people from all walks of life and still be able to speak to them you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to yourself every church and every congregation is made up of experts educationists and um, lecturers and all of that captains of industry business people and i mean a pastor must be sound to not insult the pedigree of people in the name of preaching you must bring truths that are useful applicable time tested and then anointed be fruitful i made up my mind as a man of god that by the grace of god nobody will ever insult the grace of god upon my life simply because of lack of productivity now there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the educated look for you there are things when you have only the enlightened look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek you all men all men regardless of territory regardless of expertise prophesy to someone say be fruitful be fruitful say productivity do you like what i'm teaching productivity is very powerful it's not just about money it is a measure of your usefulness to civilization it's a measure of your usability you know how productive you are by how people miss you when you are not there if your presence and your absence causes the same effect you are not a blessing i have the privilege of talking to very very blessed people and they tell me that it is true that there might not be so much jobs in nigeria but the truth is that there are many young graduates that are not employable they are educated but not very valuable I know a gentleman who works he stays i think in kaduna and he works in lagos he does three jobs and the minimum of the salary he receives is five hundred thousand. you've heard me humorously say it in one of the corporations he works for if he coughs they will buy him a pharmacy not a drug because he is he is really the brain behind the results there that god will cause you to be as valuable as gold look at how men stay in a filling station you are going to pay but you are still saying thank you that's how valuable oil is when the saints become like that then the gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising i hate mediocrity and i hate it with a passion it is responsible for the servitude of africa and we must trust god for enlightenment to be to know that spirituality and productivity are not choices that you choose one against the other no say productivity number three I apologize that i'm not dealing with the points in details i'm just just to help us um number three you want to work in dominion the third dominion system is wealth wealth w-e-a-l-t-h there is no dominion in poverty I wish i'm not the one who is teaching this now but you have to listen because it is true hello madonna let me show you two scary verses i'm surprised they are in the bible these verses will make you respect god in an unusual way proverbs 22 please we'll read verse 2 and then we'll read verse 7 remember that all scripture is inspired of the holy ghost it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness that the man of god may be mature proverbs chapter 22 and verse 2 if you're a christian please read with me one to read the rich and the poor meet together colored 
the lord is the maker of them all stop there look at this insulting statement couldn't you just say human beings inhabitants are on the earth god is god over them i mean what is the what is responsible for this insultive stratification the rich and the poor he never said the rich christian or the poor christian the rich anything and the poor anything meet together in the same territory like a classroom hear me he says god is the maker of them all not the maker of them so he never makes them so he made them as human beings they classified themselves into different dimensions so whether you choose to be lazarus or abraham god made you so he made you lazarus made heaven abraham made heaven the difference is the quality of their impact on earth there is nothing that is tied to lazarus but god names his name he decides to route through abraham even for salvation to come to people in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 he says if ye be abraham's seed then are ye heirs according to the promise Abraham verse 7 of the same Proverbs 22 please let's rush but you have to listen to what I'm saying now this verse oh dear this is the verse that in the name of Jesus Christ may your eyes be open to understand what it says this is not just about prosperity this is a, this is this is warfare right there it's not about money read with me please one to read the rich rule it over the poor uh -huh. and the borrower is servant to the lender hold on that means there are two ways to make you a slave and a servant two ways if i want you to be a slave i make you poor and if i want you to be a servant listen carefully i make you a borrower you don't subjugate people by subjugating them you manipulate the economy around them and they fall into servitude the bible says the rich will rule over the poor that means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior are we together now the rich will rule over the poor and the borrower if you decide to replace poor and put your name or your family and your nation it still holds true the rich so it's not just about prosperity and cars and houses it's a battle for influence it's a battle for the lordship of christ it's a battle for your soul i told you the ultimate commodity for exchange in this kingdom is your soul not just your money not just your products and services satan wants your soul and he can use everything to get your soul what shall it profit a man here jesus the businessman speaking if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so transaction can be done with the soul you can gain and you can lose and the commodity is your soul are we together the next verse please ecclesiastes chapter 9 very interesting story that blessed me three verses we'll start from verse 13 ecclesiastes chapter 9 please this wisdom have i also seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom one two please let's read together there was a little city uh-huh and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it next verse now now there was found in it a poor wise man stop this is a story the bible is giving us what a paradox that the man is poor and yet wise poverty and wisdom does not go hand in hand but here is a situation we have a man who is poor and wise and the bible says he by his wisdom did what 
delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man next verse then said i we're still reading wisdom is better than strength uh-huh nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard So the Bible says, it is not enough to have a message. You must have the resources to cause that message to be heard. That a, a man's wisdom delivered a city, yet the influence to preserve the honor that came with... Listen, listen, let me tell you this. I hope you know prosperity played a role in salvation. That Jesus is hanging on that tree, sir. And no prayer warrior could bring that dead body from the cross. No angel could bring the dead body of the living Christ on the cross. It took a man of influence and prosperity called Joseph of Arimathea. He used his influence and spoke to the king. And offered his virgin tomb. And Jesus was buried. It took prosperity and influence. For salvation to come if you look at prosperity just as some money mongering agenda of some lost driven Christians here and there I know there are people that approach it that way and that is incorrect you see that but this is a battle for your soul it's a battle for our children and our children's children is the battle for the continuity of God's program within a territory it doesn't matter what our message is let me tell you the gospel is heavy it takes wealth as the ark bearers to lift it you must understand this there are certain levels of economic empowerment if you do not have you will never hear certain instructions from god god searches around egypt he wants to save his people from a famine that is coming and checks every jew and nobody even jacob is qualified to see that dream so he goes to a man of influence called pharaoh and gives pharaoh the dream because only pharaoh had what it would take to make the dream come to pass there are certain levels of influence and prosperity if you do not have it's a waste for god to reveal certain things he can't tell you to build the school because it's number one you will not believe it and number two you will let other children die because of poverty so he will revelations will keep moving around abel kuta looking for men who both love god and have the empowerment it will pass your house you love god you have qualified but you fail the test because you've ignored the place of finance hallelujah hmm. i will never pastor a people who love god and are mediocres. i have seen the disaster that mediocrity brings it will make you compromise on your values because whoever feeds you guides your convictions you only have a choice when you detach yourself from the influence of pharaoh if you are in egypt you must serve the god of pharaoh was it not hunger that took god's people to egypt what else took them to egypt it was hunger so when satan wants you to go to egypt he doesn't say go to egypt he will cause that there is no bread and then hunger will take even a covenant family to Egypt. Hunger will take a man of God who started well to Egypt. Hunger will take a man of integrity to Egypt. Hunger will take a politician who vowed that he will stand for truth to Egypt. It's not about prosperity. It's about your soul. Let me tell you how you know is Satan prospering you. You prosper, but not even as your soul prospers. Two of them cannot go hand in hand. Satan will never allow your soul and your pockets to prosper. It's impossible. But when God comes, he will cause both your pocket and your soul. So he says you prosper even as your soul. That the more I prosper, the more I know God. And the more that money means nothing to me. That it does not sustain the ability to take the place of God in my life. You have frustrated Satan. If you have both money and passion for God, you have destroyed Satan.
think how frustrating it is when a man comes to your company with a product more superior than what you are selling you have no advantage you stand helpless that's what god wants the church to become for as long as we continue to beg around and beg the heathen then they will give us supplies but at the expense of our soul there is a fraternity that is happening with babylon and hunger is the motivation behind it so our sermons are coordinated by the hunger and the, that is in our belly our fraternity with men and women who are very vocal about their displeasure about the kingdom advancement but we will hate them for a while and hunger will force reconciliation but there's an army rising up yeah. there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain 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 please sit down where money will no longer be the basis of giving your son or your daughter in marriage but the will of god and purpose many people have poverty has made people to miss their life partners the lady knew that this guy was the will of god you don't like me now we can reconcile after service listen let me tell you sincerely make a vow with your destiny today that you will never you see you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your convictions and your decisions so i i understand what happened i understand the background but don't let men speak to you and say can anything good come out of nazareth let me tell you this chasing money all your life is a cause you will never have the time to serve the purposes of, the, of god we need to be delivered from that cause it's a cause your lifetime is too short to chase finances so god must raise men and women in this season who can access the provisions of the kingdom and step into dimensions that will give us the time and the influence to birth the purposes of god there are certain agenda of god that are so heavy it takes more than revelation to birth them nike the chains all in day. I hear the chains falling listen I'm saying this because there are many of us who have been indoctrinated that any any pursuit to gain financial independence is carnality and is unnecessary in fact it is thought to be pungent to your spiritual progress no a man can be derailed when your motivation is corrupted but when everything squares up and christ becomes the center and his purposes become the object my brother and my sister know that it is a cost to live in insufficiency until you see the blessings of a blessed life you will never appreciate and contrast it to the inconvenience that a life of servitude brings it's not just the issue of i hate poverty it's not just the issue of i will not suffer it's not just the issue of i need a car that is that is not a superior conviction is warfare the battle for your soul the battle for your children's soul the battle for your grandchildren's soul the battle for 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 space upon the earth the word glory from its root essence is the word wealth the weightiness of a man measured by his financial capacity because a strong man's wealth is his defense there are sermons you cannot preach when you are beggarly it's suicidal break every chain break every chain let me tell you this i've not had any discussion with our dear man of god but sometimes you see him continue to challenge you 
that when what you do is done with understanding it will work wonders in your life it is true you know the day you got born again do you know the day you entered into wealth there should be dates if it is true this like you say i got born again on the 25th of january 19 this and that you can say on this day i waved poverty and it waved me back we parted ways for good and now i'm focused to serve the purposes of the kingdom i used to think you had to do a lot of things in life it's not true it's poverty that creates activities when you are free you will there will be enough time to focus on the things that matter i guarantee you poverty can occupy you it can add jobs that are unnecessary add relationships that are useless May your children never ask you one day and say daddy you've served god all your life but where were you when the lifter of men was lifting your friend your uncle your auntie our society is full of angry people today because they look at everybody around their circle and he's successful except them and they have to build a theology to explain it because their pride cannot allow the consistent probings what happened to you were you not there in the conference break chains break this is what god is let me tell you this i come from a background where my father was the last most successful person aside from me today by the grace of god can you imagine such a family my prayer is that god will establish us fast listen let me tell you life is a function of time and it's important that certain things be done fast please don't get used to delay it's, it's a situation that needs the power of god when you build your first house at 60 it is not a blessing don't feel bad but it's not a blessing at 33 years jesus kept the world at a standstill and commissioned those who will go at age eight joash was king over israel at age nine josiah was king over israel please let's challenge ourselves parents let me encourage you challenge your children to not sit down and say i'm young the concept of i'm a child must be destroyed from the minds of young people otherwise they will stay even at 40 and still say i'm a child anybody that can think and take decisions is no longer a child break chains break it's a philosophy that has been sold to africa that keep us very poor a man of 45 will tell you he's the last born of five children and that gives him the license and the convenience to cross his legs and allow his children suffer while he waits for help and aid from other people the western world although they may not receive the things of god they have been able to adopt a philosophy that inculcates responsibility early are we blessed Let's just go to something else but let me tell you this anybody who is blessed today will tell you he has tasted poverty he has tasted prosperity i can tell you which one is better from the word from experience and from wisdom it is terrible to remain in poverty where you go to prayer you not know when you have stopped praying because the worries close your mouth what demons could not do you go to a place of prayer and in five minutes you are leaning on the wall ah, pta meeting this i thought this school fees was hundred thousand now they've increased it do they want to kill me remember you're a prayer warrior and now you are standing by the wall and calculating 
and your wife says honey the food is ready and you will not know when you turn to her and say if you if you shout at me again see i'm not shouting i was i let me tell you this poverty is a spirit the same way when someone is possessed he can act not the many fathers are good people something is making them the way they are nobody is really bad we are products of influences that must be casted away so that the real us can be seen you know how good people are when they become old when they are retired and all the trouble their children have gone you see how i say ah you mean baba you were always this kind they say i've been like that you were like that as a child and as an old man but in between satan programmed a system that changed you that we will have families in the name of the lord that can decide to take a day off for family worship and you are not afraid because the financial wherewithal to sponsor that risk instead of running around waking up in the morning and sleeping late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow that you can guide your children and say as for me and my house we have accessed the keys that will allow us serve the lord so i come to your house on a wednesday morning sir what are you doing and you say we've decided today we are fasting and praying what is this with all of you rolling in the carpet and your children rolling too you say because there is a covenant in this family to serve jehovah my children will serve my god and they say so what about your economy you say god is faithful he has given us the wisdom and the eyes of the eagle he has taken us out of famine we have found a place called brook cherith where there is a raven that can come to feed men Now I hear the chains falling. I'm not teaching on finance, but it is important. It is important. A pastor that refuses to prosper must compromise, not will compromise. Listen, there are two doors to step into the realm of greatness there is the door of value, and there is a door of need. If you enter through the door of need, you will dance to every principle and every conviction. If you step into your sphere, your circle of influence, as the one who is in need of help, let the great see you and know they are great, but they can discern your value. When our children are hungry and have to eat in the houses of other people, they will learn their God and they will learn their ways. If you come to my house and eat my food, then you have to dance to my convictions too. And if I do not honor the God of heaven, then whilst, um, well, you see, I come from the north and I know, I know what prosperity can do to convictions. That there is a level of hunger that you can have satan will come to you this year and say no no in jesus name i will stand for jesus he will leave you he knows the hunger will force a negotiation he will come two years later and say i'm still here you say okay what did you even say last year you remember you were stronger last year but as the hunger grew the nation of israel said buy us buy us not buy buy us was it not hunger that made two women eat their future they carried their future and ate it and they were about to eat another future when a prophet came and said no he didn't do counseling for them he said i know the problem by this time tomorrow the remedy to eating your future is the arrival of the blessings of christ the last one and we pray break chains break The last system of dominion is the supernatural. The supernatural component that must be captured in the life of a believer. The supernatural. The supernatural. The supernatural. The supernatural is not for men of God. The supernatural is not for pastors. Jesus gets a madman healed and they come to him and they say you do this by Beelzebub is the prince of demons in other words this is not men listen the Bible says it is the Lord's doing help me please and it is that means if it is the Lord's doing it will always be marvelous 
you don't clap for me for walking it is human to walk but when i fly it must cause your attention because where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather it will take the unusual manifestation of the wisdom the grace the power the intelligence of the spirit upon the saints to cause and compel kings to come and every time kings come to you they don't come empty-handed ask the queen of sheba she kept hearing about the exploits of solomon but was too arrogant to come it was common she had results herself but his consistency compelled her and she got up with all her her, her bounties and came to solomon theologically speaking it said that she was in the palace of solomon for six months it took six months when she saw the dexterity and the organization everything within her the palace it said she had no bread it said half of this was not told me there is a dimension of the supernatural that must come upon our lives that when your child produces a result that is not given to mere men to produce is a testimony signs and wonders are miracles with messages on them it's a signature from God through men to men saying I am God and I can still glorify myself in men Ah. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. That's what God is doing to someone. Listen, let me tell you this. You will never attract the attention of this arrogant world being natural. It will take a dimension of unusual results. There, there has to be something, a signature of God's hand upon your business, upon your life. If you do business like any other person, they will call you a colleague. But when you do it by the finger of God, you are no longer a colleague. You become a reference. Was it not men they called Zeus and Hermes? These were Greek gods. Men! Samuel was a man who was like God. Not one of his words fell to the ground. That God will grant us access. What then is the advantage of the spirit of the living God upon the saints? It's more than praying in tongues. It's more than falling down and rolling. The Holy Spirit is the advantage, not an advantage, the advantage. And when he, the spirit of truth is come, John 16 says, he will guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth. It says, and thine ear shall hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. You will find rest for your soul. Was it not Job that said there is a path which no fowl has seen? The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit that make for the victory of the saints. It will take being supernatural to attract this generation. This is not an ignorant generation. This is a generation that is knowledgeable and enlightened. When you are normal and you are regular, you do not command the attention of this generation as a pastor as a businessman as a politician there must be not just the god factor but the spirit factor upon your life elihu sat with the three friends the other two friends of job and whilst all of them were talking Job, he kept quiet and looked at them he said i wanted to speak but i was afraid because i was young and then he says that there is a spirit in man 32 and verse 8 of job he says and the inspiration of the almighty the breath the breath of the almighty can make men of understanding can make men of understanding can make men of understanding the holy spirit came upon the ordinary apostles and they transformed was it not an encounter that solomon had with the god of heaven in the night and he got up being given an understanding heart the first case that came before him was a case of two prostitutes who slept and killed their children and switched their children and solomon looked at them this could cost him his reputation he was about to judge a life and death case and having the supernatural wisdom of god 
he said bring me a knife that knife was the word of god because the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword it is the divider the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart the moment the word came the true secret was revealed the discerner of the intents and they saw the the wisdom of solomon it was the supernatural exploit of david over goliath that made the nation of israel to sing the songs that saul killed one thousand and david killed ten thousand men came to david in the camp of adulam a cave called adulam the bible says men who were in debt who were distressed and they vowed that they will make him king he turned them into mighty men they were called the men of david to the extent that one would fight with a sword that would cleave to his hands transformation is not natural it doesn't just happen by principles there must be a divine hand of god where you turn a man from this to that a superior version of himself is turning things around will turn your life around And Elijah prayed and told Ahab, Saddle your ass, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Ahab began to run. And Elijah, the Bible says Elijah was already there late. But the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot and overtook the chariot of the king down to Israel. There is a grace that comes upon you whereas it will take men 10 years to be established you come by the finger of god and by christmas this year you are standing here and kneeling down to say i, I have heard that god can change men but i have not seen it in this fashion that's what you are receiving as we conclude you have stayed in church long you have to get something to go back so that they will laugh at you and say church people they are back again ha! hello is turning things around yeah hello is turning things around hello listen i hear all the wonderful things and i thank this church and i thank everyone for loving me and loving our ministry but let me tell you this this man you see standing before you is a testament that when god puts his hand upon you there is no man born of a woman that can thwart his purposes over your life that by the finger of God, God will take you to places where you look left and right. Nobody is your age mate there. Even them, they are in shock and saying, you are not supposed to be here. And you say, he brought me. Oh, he, this one is the finger of God. God brought me. Have you heard that proverb that, that in one day a child can be born? It's not normal, but he said as soon as Zion travails, it's a possibility. In one day, born in one day the economy of a city changes in one day do you not hear that god the word of god is quick and powerful not just powerful quick 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 you don't have dominion if you don't have dominion over time the apex of dominion is not dominion over things is dominion over time when you can bring time to your hands and make things happen by the spirit so when someone here who is seated and sick now and maybe in the next five ten minutes all of a sudden you check and that you are supposed to go for a surgery and it's gone that one is by the finger of god is the handwriting of god upon your life we are praying Saul goes out to meet a man called Samuel because there was a situation in their life 
and they needed a divine intervention please listen and samuel looks at saul and says is it not because the lord has anointed you to be king over israel pours the horn on the oil on his head and then gives him three instructions he said number one the lost donkey has been found when you encounter the supernatural restoration at the instance of an encounter number two he said whilst you are on your way going you will find three men with two loaves of bread each and they will salute you honor and give to you remember they don't know you does that look like strangers shall feed your flock that you are on your way going before you went to meet the prophet you were on your own no man saluted you you went in misery now with one encounter you return and you find men who will give you their bread let me tell you everybody is a giver is what is on you that compels their giving just because they don't give to you does not mean they are not givers everybody can give including satan so if it is not coming to you you've heard me say it again and again it is what is on you that controls what is around you let me give one example and then we are going to pray ah someone's life is changing oh listen the person to really thank after this convention is your man of god and his wife i'm here and done and on my way but the testimony that will happen in your life you will be too grateful some of you will wake the man of god by two and say daddy i'm sorry it's not my usual practice but please wake up you have to hear this ah, ah. i have heard with my ears but now my eyes have seen it that god can lift men please let me have two gentlemen come the gen yes any one of you right thank you you stand here my friend you stand here stand at the opposite side now watch this it's an illustration to bless you please turn look at these guys this man is the destiny helper of this man and they are all in a bell kuta. move slowly and continue to pass yourself and turn are we together he's praying oh god change my life Yes, his destiny helper passing him every day in Abel Kuta. There is no grace to call the helper. Keep going again. Lord, when will you change the story of my life? His helper is passing him. But he comes to this convention and something comes upon you. You didn't even know that something has come upon you. Now watch this. Oh dear, this guy is under the anointing. Help him. Um, I wanted to use somebody for example. Oh come anybody come sorry just just leave him you have received your own is not a story again watch this now look at this this gentleman I, I, are you getting what i'm saying now now because of this anointing walk slowly when you get to yourself stop it would have been as usual except for this now when he gets there this anointing starts speaking to this man listen the anointing has a voice the anointing now begins to call this man and says no you can't pass him like that again it was like that but after a conference and he will stop and give this man something you call it favor you call it breakthrough but it is that when god wants your cup to run over he anoints your head not your cup thou anointest my head but the effect is seen on my cup you reign you reign Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. listen to me let me tell you this we're rounding up we're rounding up listen you see every time god wants to change your life he introduces a man never say men do not matter no it is always from god through men to you it is never from god to you from god through men to you a new anointing from god through men to you destruction from satan through men to you men will always be in the center watch this 
come david is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself become king god is here on the throne he had rejected saul as king but in the middle of prophecy a man shows up called samuel and says i refuse david from being king god decided that david is king david is ready to be king but a man stands in between and says no whoever told you men cannot stop the will of god read your bible I want to show you something and we are going to pray if you hear what i'm teaching you remember i taught you yesterday that there are three dimensions to experiencing the power of god and that it is not always about your personal sacrifice and your prayer life there are times that god wants to help you he knows the process of transformation will take time so he will bring you in contact with a grace he has vowed with this is why we honor men we don't honor men because of their bodies we honor men because of the sacrifice of alignment that has happened in the secret place that has made god to swear his name upon their life that they represent portals conduits of spiritual possibilities and god comes to samuel and says how long will you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king in other words samuel i beg you you are delaying somebody's destiny get up take up your horn i am god but i am limited this is the world of man that's why the world had to become man to come here it's illegal to operate here if you are not a man so the almighty god is limited by men that's why prophecy is prolonged because the men with the level of grace to make that prophecy come are not there let me tell you something when god speaks over your life it will take a grace to make it so when jesus was born he didn't just show up there were two prophets in the temple called simeon and one another prophetess they were interceding even so lord come maranatha come jesus did not just show up because he was the son of god there is the prophetic dimension of lifting there is the prophetic dimension of dominion and in the next five minutes you are coming under that influence listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters i know that there are men who believe that every man is just a joker and every man is just a hungry man looking for money or pastors are... no 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 there are men who have vowed a vow with god there are men that have become systems by the grace and the predeterminate counsel of god that you come under the influence of their grace everything about your life must show yeah na 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 yeah na 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 hallelujah our time is gone but in the next two minutes this is our final session i want you to cry that in not whatever must live your life today as far as god is in heaven i join my faith with our father I'd like you to cry to god in the next five minutes i don't know if there are people who are tired pastors there are realms that we must enter today there are levels of grace and anointings please where is that drummer that played for this man i need somebody really where is there's one please shabarakatosia are you praying the mighty one is about to have a convocation in this place have you heard this proverb that in one day city is born pastor that you can enter a dimension of grace today that will shift your church and your ministry into a level you never dreamt possible dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page 
for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.